Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here today. Another green background day. We got a green solid candle up 3% on the day, 3.1 exactly right at this moment. We are on our way up to that 50-day exponential moving average. We're very, very close to tapping it. We've hit it once, twice in the past. Going back for a third time, can we surge through it? And if you guys remember, on our indicator, it is giving us a potential bearish fall if this breaches the 50 and does not claim it as a support. We also have very, very bullish contradictions to that indicator, and that is, of course, the supply and demand zone all the way up here at 46 cents. And of course, the 1100 exponential moving average is also the top of our supply and demand sitting here at 51 cents, essentially. So there is also a nice giant fair value gap from the candle on Tuesday, November 8th, that needs to be filled, which gets us back in this. So an amazing video as far as charts coming your way. We're going to look at the weekly, daily, four hour. We'll check out XRP. We'll look at Bitcoin and we'll look at Ethereum. For the news today, we are going to be jumping into some great stuff here. Telegram set to build crypto exchange in response to FTX collapse. And if you're not familiar, Telegram is where a lot of crypto goes on. And now they've taken it to the next level, wanting to build their own exchange. Really exciting there. Brazil's Congress passes bill to legalize Bitcoin and Ether payments in the country. If you guys are not aware, there's some major craziness going on in Brazil right now. The uh, election was held there. The person who won the, there's an uprising against that person because they feel like it was fraudulently stolen from them. And now Brazil's Congress passing a bill for crypto. Um, so decentralization coming to Brazil. Looking at what's going on there, we'll take a look in that. Brazil, also part of the BRICS countries, trying to create their own new world reserve currency. So we'll check out that article. And of course, XRP bulls unmoved by Coinbase delisting pushes token price higher. Now, if you guys remember, and this could because of supply shock, right? So um, right now, if people start moving their XRP off of exchanges or, I mean, I know that the Coinbase wallet is not an exchange, but Coinbase still has the ability to see what's in there. So if you were to move this and stash it, it's way less likely to be on-chain data in your you're going to be able to store it in your cold wallets, whatever the case may be. Um, that's kind of what's forced everyone in the XRP community that was holding their coins on the XRP wallet or the Coinbase wallet to pull them, move them to a different wallet. I had some people down in the comments section, oh, it's just the Coinbase wallet, bro. It's just the Coinbase wallet. It doesn't mean that they're, de they're taking away your XRP. You can still hold it. Well, here's the deal. First off, Coinbase delisted XRP. Yes, you can still be holding your tokens on the uh, exchange if you have them there. But now they, they've Coinbase has now removed the ability to hold them in your Coinbase wallet. So meaning you can only just hold and store your XRP tokens on Coinbase, but nowhere else. You can't buy, sell. Uh, you can't store it in their wallet, but they're letting you hold it on. The, do you think that's smart? Like some people are fighting me. Oh, you're, you're sitting out. Fake news. This is clickbait, bro. Why are you why are you why are you clickbaiting us, man? It's not clickbait. Coinbase delisted. Remove it. Coinbase wallet. You're not allowed to hold your XRP in there anymore. Yes, you can still hold it on the actual exchange. Why the hell would you though? Get it the frick off of there. Do not let them hold any of your coins, right? Emergency, emergency. Take all of your coins off of every exchange at all possible and get it out there immediately. Hold it in your own wallets not your keys, not your cryptos. I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is information that is, none of this information should be construed as financial advice. Do not buy or sell anything we talk about. This is my personal opinion. Why are you holding your coins on an exchange right now? Why are you holding your coins on an exchange right now? The only reason you are is to buy and sell or you're not educated enough on how to use a wallet. Get a MetaMask wallet, buy a, a Trezor wallet, or you can even get, a ledger wallet. In fact, one of our members who just joined the bull club today or yesterday, he minted his bull into his ledger wallet. Even his NFTs he's sto storing in ledger wallets. So we're going to be covering all that today. We'll get to this last. Uh, and then, well, the last thing we'll be touching on is the charts because we got a lot to cover there. 
first and foremost, Telegram set to build an exchange. This is pretty big news here. According to Durov, the creator of Telegram, the new venture seeks to rectify the existing centralization of cryptocurrency entities, a factor he noted has let down millions of users with reference to FTX exchange, the CEO said in his official Telegram channel. And if you guys know, when it comes to crypto, the reason that a Coinbase was created, the reason that a Crypto.com was created was for people to have ease of use, right? Um and maybe ease of use is not the way crypto needs to be done. Maybe there is one or two steps that needs to be done that are harder than just going to an exchange, buying and selling really easy on there. For the centralization issue, right? We want to get out of centralized crypto. Bitcoin was created for decentralized money. We didn't want one world governing body, the Federal Reserve, to be in control of all of everyone's money. The Bitcoin was created. Now, unfortunately, there's a potential that... The Federal Reserve has bought up every freaking Bitcoin, right? I mean, that's what people are talking about out there. Do they own more Bitcoin than everyone else? Well, we just did an article on that, that the United States government now holds more Bitcoin than all traders out there. So regardless, we still got to move on, right? And that's why we have XRP. That's why we're fighting against the government currently with XRP so that they're not registered as a security. So that way that can go on, but then that will be a tool of the one world government, <laughs> the freaking Federal Reserve. It's kind of funny, right? Because we're all out here, oh, screw the Federal Reserve, down with the Federal Reserve. But at the same time, we're like, yeah, you know what? Run, Make sure XRP goes to $3,000 a coin because the Federal Reserve bought it and uses it. So um, it's, it's a double-edged sword out there, of course. But as he says here, he said, Telegram's next step is to build a set of decentralized tools, including non-custodial wallets and decentralized exchanges for millions of people to securely trade and store cryptocurrencies. This way we can fix the wrongs caused by the excessive centralization would let down hundreds of cryptocurrency users. He then went on to add, the solution is clear. Blockchain-based projects should go back to their roots. Decentralization. Cryptocurrency users should switch to trustless transactions and self hosted wallets that don't rely on single third party. He also called for Ethereum, suggesting that the platform remains outdated and expensive even after its recent tweaks. And that is true because when the network when the network volume starts to come back in, and I don't mean the price just going up, just lots and lots and lots of exchanges of Ethereum when NFTs come back and this, that, and the other starts to happen. Well, Ethereum gas fees tend to go high. So there's got to be some way to make it better. It is worth noting that Telegram has recently made inroads in the crypto space with several products. For instance, users of the messaging platform can purchase and sell cryptocurrencies without leaving the application using the open network or TON. As the probe into collapse continues of FTX, the exchange founder, Sam Bankman-Fried, has denied allegations of wrongdoing. According to a Finbold report, Bankman-Fried claimed that the collapse emerged due to a massive correlation of things during a free market moves. Lies. Now, I completely believe in innocent until proven guilty, but this guy, there's already so much evidence showing his guilt. It's absolutely ridiculous. Other good news for expanding the crypto hedge ahead of us brazil's congress passes bill legalizing bitcoin ether payments the bill which mainly aims to provide oversight of the country's cryptocurrency sector will be presented to president jair balansaro who is now legally the rightful president of brazil even though he lost the election it was found to be fraudulent that he lost the military backed jair and now the country's moving forward so that is it was just crazy that went down over in Brazil. If assented to, the law will require all crypto exchanges and other crypto custodians to acquire licenses. Notably, the regulation provides a clear definition of digital assets and their service providers and makes provisions against fraud and money laundering. Active crypto service providers will also be required to establish a physical office within the country. Most crucially, the bill requires crypto service providers to distinguish between company and user funds clearly. The bill also provides a grace period for companies to comply with those in breach of the set out rules, risking severe fines or even prison sentences. 
All right, XRP Army, here we go. XRP Bulls unmoved by the Coinbase delisting. And, you know, it's interesting because I talked to a lot of XRP uh, community members. I have an XRP Facebook group with over 60,000 people in it, and it's a big deal. And they're very much an educated bunch, right? They're, they're Because of the type of token that XRP is, what it's dealing with, and also, you know, Ripple as a company and what it stands for, what it's doing, what it's built. The XRP community seems to be um, very educated on the ways of money. It's actually, it's very, it's very interesting because there's other, there's other communities out there, other tokens that are really cool, but XRP, like their intellect is rather high. XRP still holds a bullish sentiment despite news emerging on November 29th that crypto exchange Coinbase will end the wallet support services for seventh rank digital currency by market cap. As things stand, XRP is trading at 40 cents, gaining over 2%. Now we saw up to 3%. Furthermore, the weekly chart indicates Ripple's native token has rallied almost 7% for the week. And here we see the November chart just of this week, really. Price ran up to 41 cents traded sideways for a couple of days, had that massive sell-off, and then pumped up again. Coinbase wallet withdrawing XRP support. And that is what we covered yesterday. There's a full video on that. If you would like to see that, it'll be linked at the end of this video. Let's go check out the charts. All right, guys. So here we are on the XRP charts. We are on the daily charts up 2.83% now on the day. As we've been talking about, there is plenty of room to run to the upside because we have not hit the volatility band to the upside. And we did cross over the market baseline a couple of days ago, which was back here, November 24th. And we've been in the bullish green background ever since. Now, the other thing that we have going on today, we've officially passed back over, which we've been there already, but we had a dip. We've now crossed back above the 50 line on the RSI. Well, we will officially when this candle closes, as long as we maintain this bullish momentum on the day, because right now it's currently sitting at 49.7. So it's very, very close there. Let's look on the Japanese candlesticks. Do we have any difference? Uh, yes, we do. So we're at a 51.1 on the Japanese candlesticks. Bullish above the 50, bullish green background. We've also flipped bullish uh, secondary green background. So this is a green background and uh, this is red here. When you have a green on green, it's really, really bullish. So that's really exciting. Now there is, uh, and and we went through this yesterday. So if you're not, if you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you're not missing out on any of this information. But as we see labeled here on our charts, we had a four hour uh, moving average potential move here. It did not really get there. We'll check the four hours. And you can see it never really came down below that moving average, which is absolutely fine. Stayed bullish above it, which is really, really good news. As we drop down into smaller time frames, our one hour signals were showing that we would have had a bullish move coming. We just, if it were to dip under the one hour, it didn't even do that. It just kept rallying up. Then we had our 15 minute indicator here, which was also bullish. If price were to dip below the 50 exponential moving average on the 15 minute charts and make its way back to the top, which dipped down, made its way back up to the top and sure enough, kept on powering through. But by far the best move that was in our indicators yesterday was the five minutes. So our orange line here. So we had to wait it out because we were waiting for it here, right? So it was up above, it made a nice run here. And in fact, when we were talking, I remember yesterday while we were recording the video, Right before we finished up, we were like, oh, yeah, look, it's starting to make the move because it had dipped under. And, oh, look, it's starting to make the move. And boom, boom, boom. After getting off that video, it really ran, which was really exciting. It actually ended up making its way all the way up to the one hour 1100 exponential moving average, which is where it's finding a little bit of resistance at this moment. So on that smaller time frame there on our one hour RSI, We, you can see we did switch over to the bullish background starting about here on the RSI indicator, and it stayed nice and bullish to the upside for quite some time. In fact, it's still bullish. In reality, it's still making its move to the upside, but we are running into a little bit of resistance there. 
Well, we are waiting for, we do have a 50 day exponential moving average. And for those of you guys that have not seen this before, um, these indicators, as you take the level, they become more and more strong, right? So all of these levels have all flipped to bullish scenarios right now. The one hour, four hour, five minutes, 15 minutes, but we are running into a potential scenario in my indicator here that we could see a sell-off after price reaches above the daily 50 exponential moving average, which we've gotten really, really close to. So if price jumps up above here, and this was what we said yesterday, if price were to come up here, it would have to be here obviously for a day or two, maybe even three, four, then we could see a sell-off. That's only if, that's only if it loses that support. If it jumps up here, stays bullish above that 50 exponential moving average, what did we talk about yesterday? We talked about, boom, getting up into our next level of supply and demand, which is really exciting. Because if we take a look at our daily supply and demand zones, let's go, whoops, don't need that. I need to go here. And before all of this stuff happened here, right? So where was our supply and demand zone? After this move started its way up, the downside supply and demand zone was right here. And remember, we're doing daily is red now. We've switched up our color. So daily is red. And sure enough, look, so after it took off here, it left us all the way up here, right? It was here, it was here, it was here. We said that the supply and demand zone's back down here. Price came down, retested that zone, is making its way back up again. Now, the really exciting thing is after we get out of all of this interference, if bullish momentum starts coming back into the markets, we can start making our way up to these higher levels. And that is the levels that we've been tracking now. So we're going to go ahead and throw these out there too. Let's do our gray lines. So we need 55, 45, 35, and 65. So we'll go ahead and label these out. So this one's going to be coordinates 0 0.35. Boom. All right. This one right here. It's going to be 0 0.45. Whoa, 0.45. There we go. And this one right here will be 0 0.55. And then this one will be 0 0.65. And you know what else we do need to do? Because we can't, there's still a possibility, right? So there is a very, very downside lurking there. 0 0.25. It is there and it is still a possibility. So now that we've got these lines marked up, let's take a look at what we're looking at. So first and foremost, we have our 35 cent line here, which was also basically the top of our supply and demand zone. We said price could come back down into that level. It did, boom, 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 right there. And the 35 cent Japanese candlesticks here, 35 cent had acted as a support as well. Okay, then we said, all right, it needs to move up to 45 cents because it is going in increments. And you can see this on the different levels of all of the XRP charts as you go back even here, here, and here, okay? So what we're looking at right now is our next move to the upside. And that is getting up to 45 cents. So 45 cents being up here, we've broke above the 35 cents. We're running into a massive, massive hard resistance here at the 50 exponential moving average. If it breaks and cracks that, so that's what we were talking about. If it breaks and holds that, boom, next level, 45 cents. In reality, getting up into this 47 cent level supply and demand zone even. If it doesn't, then we are going to be coming back down to retest. So it could be breaking up above this daily 50. If it does not hold support, we could see the drop back down to a 35 cent level or even all the way down into the supply and demand zone of 34 cents. If it doesn't hold support there, we could see the continued drop. Now today, there was really good news. All of the markets responded, lots and lots and lots of green, stocks, cryptos, everything, because of what Jerome Powell said at his meeting today. Really, really positive news will do stuff like that. So now let's drop down. Oh, let's take a look at the weekly as well. Look at this. Two, three consecutive bullish weeks. This one has run into the 14 exponential moving average in the past. Last week, we're still not there yet. That's that same spot as the daily 50 exponential. 
And that also gives us the same scenario here, though, because this one massive major candle left a giant fair value gap. That fair value gap fills right here at 45 cents. So watch this. Turn on fair value gap as well. Boom. So that fair value gap gets us right back up there to that 45 cent level. So all of these things come into play. All right, now let's go and check with the indicator and see what we've got here. And we'll go ahead, we'll do top down from daily down. All right, so daily is still showing a potential bearish scenario. And that is price breaks above the 50 exponential moving average. If it does that, we could see it then wrap down over the next couple of days. Well, let's let's like keep in mind the most important thing is that XRP holds support at the 50 exponential moving average. If it does, we're bullish. And again, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this information is financial advice. Just one indicator that I use that I like that has been pretty spot on so far. Our four hour, four hour indicator was showing bearish. It was showing bearish. Well, yesterday it, it was it started flipping to a uh, maybe, maybe not type of situation, right? But uh, now it's getting more along the lines of bullish. However, if price were to drop, it's still potential. So now we take our four hour to the four hour 50 exponential moving average, change this information. And now we update the dates. This is going to be the 30th and it is going to be bear. So there is still bearish potential here for the four hour. All right. So that means if price were to like severely come down with some heavy volume for whatever reason, if this move today was fake, the Jerome Powell speech, blah, 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 all of a sudden it comes crashing down, then the four hour is still bearish. So now we jump to the one hour chart and we look here at the one hour. The one hour is bullish. The one hour is bullish. You can also see yesterday's 50 exponential moving average, one hour was here at 39 cents and it's now moved its way all the way up to here. And this is bullish. We're gonna update this, bullish on the 30th. One hour, 50 EMA is bullish on the 50, and that is currently sitting at 0.398. So essentially for that move to play out, price would have to wrap down under and then explode to the upside. So that's where we're at right now. And this is also those supply and demand zones we were talking about yesterday. They've all now been invalidated. So we'll get rid of those. All right, let's drop to the 15 minute. And the 15 minute is showing bullish also. So we'll jump to the 15 minutes here. We need to move our 15 minute green line up to this level here. So if price were to drop right here and then come back and swoop under, we could see a explosion to the upside on the 15 minute charts. Let's drop to the five minute charts. Five minutes is also bullish and the five minute chart is getting close to its move potentially playing out now. So what I'm looking for is XRP to take a little dip here over the next you know, 30 minutes or so. If it comes under here, swoops under, and then breaks back above. So if it breaks below the 50 exponential moving average, sits there for a couple minutes or whatever, maybe an hour, then power to the upside. And then finally getting us to the section we've been talking about getting to that 50 exponential moving average and then claiming that as a support. So as you can see now, all the four hours still showing potential bear, but our one hour, 15 minute, five minute, all bullish. Let's even drop it down to the micro time frame of the one minute. Now the one minute right now is choppy as can be. So there's no telling. It's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It is showing and reading more of a bullish scenario, but the reality is nothing's going on. So you can see here, price comes under the 50 and make, I mean, I guess if you're scalping, cause it is bullish, right? So if it come under and then I'm like, okay, I'll scalp this move here, it comes under, okay, I'll scalp this move here. Uh, those are scenarios that are playing out over and over and over again. But right now you can see it's losing a little bit of steam and we could see it returning to the five minute play. If it doesn't hold at the five minute play, we can see it to the 15 minute play. The interesting thing here, uh, at, like yesterday, and we talk about this line a lot, this blue line, 1100. Price could just run down real quick. Boom, boom, boom. Come straight down, bounce off this 1100 exponential moving average, and then turn right back around and make its way up.
Okay, now let's check out Ethereum on the same scale here. So Ethereum and XRP and Bitcoin they trade they trade similarly, but they're not uh, they're not exact hand in hand. Uh, we do have the daily scenario is the same scenario. So this daily 50 exponential moving average, we're on the 30th. So we'll just label this for the 30th. It is a bear on the daily. We are, whoa, there we go. So we are bearish on the daily charts and that's where price is currently sitting at 1313. We go to the four hour. The four hour chart was sitting down here yesterday. The bearish move did not play out. That was at 1193. It has now moved up all the way to 1208. The four hour is showing a bearish move still. And so we'll update that four hour bearish that is on the 30th. All right, dropping down to the one hour. One hour is bullish. One hour is nice and bullish. We are also running into that 1100 exponential moving average on the one hour for this one as well. The one hour is now going to be at the 50 exponential moving average, which is 1244. So price would need to come swoop under that to make the move to the upside. You can see how close it is now to that daily 50 exponential moving average, the red line. Now we drop to the 15 minute. Our 15 minute is also bullish. The 15 minute chart is bullish. Oh, that's five minute. That'll be up there too. But the 15 minute is bullish right now. Let's edit this for the 30th. 15 minutes bull. But price would have to come, has to come back to the move, then make the move. The five minute, five minute Ethereum is also bullish. And that move could happen just as same as XRP re relatively quickly, as you can see right now. It's getting to the 50. If it dips under here, maybe bounces off this trend line support and then makes its way back to the upside. That's what the indicator is showing here. We'll see if that happens. If not, then it falls down to the 15 minute. If not, then it falls down to the one hour. But we have the five, 15, one hour are all bullish. Four hour daily are bearish. So as long as we keep building this momentum on these lower time frames, we're looking really good. Okay, now over here on Bitcoin, I was doing some charting earlier. It did run into a supply and demand breakout zone here for Bitcoin, which is interesting. So the top of a supply and demand candle gets us right here. Price has reached that level on the daily, and this could it, it could make a big move. And it's also about to break through the market baseline. We had a daily bullish divergence. We could see a lot of momentum coming into Bitcoin here. And of course, with the big news, this could all be a trap. So that's the only reason why I'm covering all of it. But again, if, if bullishness comes in and we continue to climb these lower time frames, price could very likely climb all the way back to this 50 exponential moving average, getting to 18,000. A lot of people are going to be like, oh my gosh, it's on, it's on, it's on. Everything's flying because we did cross here. Now we even have the bullish background on the Japanese candlesticks for Bitcoin. But what I'm watching for is price to get up to this level, hold it as a support, then make the move or just straight out moon. That would be totally fine too. But what I don't want to see is price get here, stay for a day, three days, and then break back down below. All right. So now we have our daily is a bearish indicator here. And that is on the 30th today. Let's go to our four hour chart. Bitcoin four hour also bearish still here. It was bearish yesterday as well. Let me find it in here. There it is. So now we move it up to this level. Four hours bearish. And that level is at 16,558 today. It did climb. Now we go to our one hour. One hour is bullish. So drop to the one hour. One hour yesterday was bearish. So more momentum came in. Now we're looking more bullish here for the one hour as well. So we switch this and we go bull and we're 30 minute or the 30th today. So price is actually quite a ways away from there. So price would have to come down here and dip there. That would be a lot, you know, that'd be a pretty large drop. The other interesting thing to watch for here is that the one hour 
1100 exponential moving average for Bitcoin is currently at our daily 50 exponential moving average. But on Ethereum, on the one hour, we hit it. XRP on the one hour, we hit it. So could Bitcoin just be trailing and it's on its way here soon as well? That would be an interesting scenario to see play out. Okay, so one hour is bullish on the indicator. Our 15-minute indicator is also bullish. We move it all the way up to here for the 15-minute. So that one's at 16,960. And of course, now let's flip to the five minute. The five minute is also bullish. So we take our five minute up as well. So now we have the five, the 15, the one hour, all bullish. The four hours bearish, but that could flip. We also hit that breakout line that I was telling you about on the supply and demand zones, and it's turning it into a support. That's bullish as well. Let's see the one minute chart. One minute chart also showing bullish for Bitcoin. I don't have a line for it really, but as we can see, it's now currently under the 50 exponential moving average. So over the next you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes, if it makes the power back up above the 50 exponential moving average, it could turn back to nice and bullish there as well. You can see it's at the bottom of the Bollinger Band, so it could climb. Last time it was down at the same level was here. It ran up for 10, 15, 20 minutes. So let's see how this plays out. So right now it's also breaking. It needs to also break and stay above that 14 exponential moving average. That's like the double shield. We have the green background. The major back background, but the green background there, once it crosses this market baseline, you'll see that happened here last time, and it did have a nice power through. It also stayed and busted above that 14 exponential moving average before dropping back down. All right, so breaking it back down daily. New daily candle just started, by the way. But daily is bearish all the way up here at 18,000, really, 17,900. Price has to run all the way up there and get it to turn bearish. But... Four hour is bearish. We have this massive, massive daily candle from yesterday. There is a fat fair value gap in here. If price comes to fill that fair value gap, it also gets very close to the four hour. Could it continue falling? So I'm not 100% bullish yet, um, but the five, the 15, one hour, all bullish, four hour bearish. In the day. If you're ready to earn an extra 200 to $3,000 per day in passive income, just like the run guys do every single day, then like this video, subscribe to the channel, then click the link in the description of this video to learn the run guys number one way to start earning passive income online with crypto today.